gang, it's Scott Detweiler here, uh, back with another mid-journey Photoshop bashing day. Uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff, uh, trying to work through an AI ch art challenge we have. Right, I have my camera hooked up now. Uh, so the idea here is that every week we're doing an AI art challenge. This is over on Twitter. I put my Twitter uh, down below, so if you want to follow along, it's down there. And uh, obviously encourage you to join along. So if you're looking to do something a little more challenging, uh, or at least do something with a goal, uh, then this would be a great opportunity. Uh, so the seasonal... I don't know, theme this week. That's a bit confusing. It's any of the four seasons or the four seasons together. Um, because of the challenges with AI and what's called the three basket challenges was producing three different baskets of three different fruit as a prompt, which nobody's been able to do. Um, I'm not going to attempt to do all four seasons in one scene. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Mid Journey. We're going to work through some prompts. I'll give you some ideas on some of the strategies I use when I'm approaching that and talk through some stuff that maybe you don't uh, don't know or wanted to learn. And then we're going to take it into Photoshop and we're going to try and finish the piece. I have no idea what we're going to get. I haven't done this. I haven't practiced it. But this is how I typically approach a project like this. So I thought it'd be kind of cool for you to see me maybe fail at it. And then you can go, oh, yeah, that guy screwed up just like I would have screwed up. Or we get something fantastic out of it. I don't know. When we're done, I'll change the thumbnail for this video. So if you're watching this later, you can say, oh, yeah, that, that's what happened. Because I don't know what it's going to look like. So you're going to find all along with me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go to this view here. I do have a webcam, uh, which is pointing down at my desk. So um, if you want to see what I'm doing, um, I tend to grab my Wacom tablet and bring that over here when I use it. I'm not a person who uses my Wacom tablet all day long, every day. I find that slows me down considerably. Uh, so you're going to see that I work in this view for the most part. Um, so uh, with that being said, I am on my Discord server. Uh, with, there's a link down below for that. It's free, of course. Uh, but this is a lot quieter place to work um, than working on the Mid Journey bot, which is or the Mid Journey rooms, which are just full of stuff. And you can't keep track of what's going on. It's too fast, at least for me anyway. Um, I did type in the info. So if you use slash info, you can get info on your accounts. You can see um, that I am using relax mode, which means basically I have an infinite number of images I can produce, but um, I'm at the will of the AI and how much uh, of a backlog it has for what's going to happen. Um, and you can see uh, I've got quite a few 90% of my time left and I've uh, already you know, renewed, <laughs> renewed in the 30th. So we got plenty of, uh, plenty of hours to use. If things get slow, then I may choose to change this. Um, also, if you're on my Discord server and you are a supporter of the channel, thank you very much, by the way. I've had a lot of people join for the channel. Love you guys. Thank you so much. I put uh, some of my images with some of the prompting as well on YouTube. Uh, but if you're a member at any level, there's also a private mid-journey down room down here. I just added, and it is really quiet. So if you want to work and you want to work somewhat privately, but you don't want to pay the additional $20 a month for the private use, uh, then you've got this down here. Okay, so... Uh, we got four seasons to play with. I think I'm going to go with fall. I like autumn the best um, from, uh, I don't know, color standpoint, uh, impact. Uh, when we talk about image competitions on this website a lot, in fact, yesterday was the image competition, uh, the final entry uh, for the early for the international print competition, which I do very well at. Uh, I want to do the same kind of thing here. I want to create a great image. The number one thing every time we do something is impact it's always impact uh, no it's actually monster i love monster <laughs> uh, so impact is the trunk of the tree of all the different things hey is it well lit is it in focus you know is it storytelling all oh, is it color balance if you don't have impact all the rest of that is kind of crap we don't really care if you don't go wow so we need a wow image and i think fall images tend to produce wow images spring you got flowers but you also have murky weather usually a lot of mud eh. winter winter can be a wow uh, because it's easy to identify winter. It's also easy to identify fall. Spring could be summer. Summer could be spring. Who knows? Um, so I'm going to go with fall. So we're going to talk to the mid-journey bot. We're just going to write to imagine. And uh, I know I'm going to do autumn, but uh, I don't really know what I want to do, right? I guess that's the whole, uh, you say the bonus of this engine is ideation, right? The idea of coming up with ideas, letting the bot hand you ideas. So we can start with a very generic prompt and kind of go from there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with uh, um, autumn scene. Uh, I want it to be horizontal. So I know I'm going to do that. And I'm going to show you a neat trick here. Actually, I'm going to show you the neat trick. Um, yeah, I'll show you the neat trick in a bit because I think you'll get a lot out of that. Um, it's for, for common, uh, the, the, the variables you set commonly uh, and a way to get that often. So in autumn scene, I would like um, a woman in a dress. Uh, how about made of leaves? 
Uh, grass made of leaves. We have uh, blowing leaves. Forest. I I want autumn colors. Uh, so fall colors. Um, that's probably pretty good. And then I'm going to use landscape. Now this is not a normal command. So what you can do is if you find yourself typing the same things over and over again, like I want a wide or I want a tall, I want a portrait, whatever. I did is I made shortcuts for these things. So let's just enter this and I screwed it up already. Um, oh, enable view permission for this channel. Okay, well, looks like I haven't used this channel before and now you see that that is a bad thing. So let's do this. Let's just abandon this for now and we'll go back to the Mid Journey channel on up here. And I'll fix that later. How about that? That just goes you to test everything before you do it, right? Bam. Okay, so what is this landscape? And that's an option. So you can set different options. So you can do slash prefer. And you see prefer option. You can do prefer option list. I'll show you mine. So I have wide, which is aspect ratio of two to one. Landscape, which is an aspect ratio of three to two. So, so a little bit less than two to one. Uh, this is more like your your DSLR camera. This is a landscape more mode of that portrait would be obviously the vertical version of that and then tall would be an extra tall a two to one so rather than going in and hyphen hyphen ar two one you know whatever i just created very brief versions of those so i can type wide landscape portrait or tall and you can do these yourself by just doing prefer option set and then you can give it a name and you can give it all the options and if there's a few options you can give those as well um, so you can do all kinds of stuff all right so we're just letting these load here um, I am in private and I'm in relaxed mode. So private is $20 additional per month. In case you're wondering, some people are always like, hmm, how, how is it that you're not seeing my images in Discord? Uh, because I pay additional for it to be private to me. And I don't know that that's actually a very useful um, you know, useful setting. Uh, the question is, should you only use 3.2 uh, in camera when capturing photos? Uh, that's the default for most uh, most modern DSLRs, yes. In fact, an 8x10 frame is a is a is uh, an antique frame size. Your camera does not shoot 8x10. It shoots 8x12 uh, or a 4 to 5. So it's a little bit weird. So your camera shoots 2 to 3, but yet you're trying to frame it in a 4 to 5, which doesn't really work out real well. All right. So and we have, uh, we're having someone else in the channel here who's with us doing stuff. And you can go up and um, there's other ways to, to filter what you're looking at as well. Um, you can go up here and you can click in your inbox. And then in your inbox, you can go to your mentions. And then what will happen is every time something that happens, like you can see my bot here, uh, put it in my um, in in my uh, general that I was doing a live stream, as it does a little notification for that. But it's, if this thing is busy over here, um, and we just wait, this inbox will ta-da! It'll show you your picture. So if you're swimming through the giant stream of of stuff over on the Mid Journey Room or the Stable Diffusion Room or any of these other ones and you can't figure out what's going on, just use this little inbox up here. That is just awesome for Discord. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. Let's make it big. This is kind of what it handed us. Um, uh, so it looks like a pile of leaves rather than a dress made of leaves. So let's go back and let's look at what happened with our English uh, because obviously we screwed that up. And a woman with a woman in a dress made of leaves. Hmm. Blowing leaves forest. All right, so maybe I put too too much, too little. Uh, let's let's try again. But uh, let's let's be a little more let's be a little more specific. So if I say a uh, a beautiful woman, we're probably going to get more headshots. The reason being is that the bot is now attempting to show me that it did indeed capture something beautiful. So be careful when you do this. Um, if you just say a woman you're probably going to end up with a farther back view because it doesn't need to prove that it's a woman by showing you the face. Um, you could just say beautiful. Now you might, or I can say, you might still get a headshot, but if you say beautiful, you're probably going to get a lot more headshots because it's got to prove that to you. Um, if you're very specific um, with, uh, say, red hair, I'm probably, I'm really asking for a headshot now. Um, so she's wearing a dress made of leaves. So we're, we're nice, we're specific, we're giving it enough, but we're not giving it too much. I've seen a lot of people like just go prompt insane. And again, tuning is a thing, but let's start with what do we basically need first? Basically, we need the, the idea of you know, what, what it is we're after. So very, very simple. Okay, now do we have a preferred 
artist style. So uh, we can we can go with anything you'd like to. Uh, I'm a huge uh, Peter uh, Morbacher fan. If you guys don't know who that is, he's awesome. Um, I supported him on on uh, Patreon as well. Uh, so I want to say uh, now this is also fun. You could say um, by Peter Morbacher, which means it's really going to try and make it look like he did it. Or you can do inspired by which will not look as much as if he did it. It'll it'll kind of take some of the points of what he's doing. Um, I, I just find this very interesting that this is the way the bot tends to treat this as inspired by and by are very different, um, at least from what I have found. You know, it's very difficult to uh, look at this from a kind of a, let me say, a measurement standpoint, because if you change one letter, you get a completely different image. And so it's hard to know. Like a lot of people are like, well, don't use commas, use periods. Well, how do you know? Because if you use commas and then you use periods, you're going to get a completely different thing anyway. So I just try and make it as natural language as possible uh, because you're going to find that over time, this bot is learning English at the same time. It's learning, uh, you know, how to do the things for us here. So just be aware that there is a bit of uh, learning from its standpoint as well. All right, so once we got Peter Morbacher here, and I, again, I want to do a landscape. Otherwise, it's going to default to that goofy square, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, so we're just going to do landscape. Is there anything else that I need to put here? Not yet. I think this is good enough for now. Let's see what we get. And uh, again, use this as a point of departure. Now, most Peter Morbacher images tend to be portrait orientation. Uh, so I might have to switch this. So what this is doing is it's saying it wants to feature more of the um, kind of the out exterior or the landscape of things. So if it's zoomed in like a landscape here or a landscape orientation, it's probably going to try and fill the image with stuff, right? Well, that may not be what we want. It looks like, again, we're asking for a headshot here because we put the word beautiful. Let's try it without beautiful in front of it. This is the awesome thing about having a relax mode is because I don't have to um, I don't have to worry about blowing up the 10 images I'm paying for every month because I can just go to town on this thing and uh, see what we got here. I'm just going to let that roll around. And I'm probably going to end up replacing the faces on these things, so I'm not overly concerned about the faces. But if if for this AI challenge I'm trying to say I want to use only AI stuff, then uh, I should try and get a good face out of it, but then I can photo bash it together, kind of like we do with the Alice in Wonderland. And again, when you're seeing more close-ups, and I guess it's this red hair one. Let's let's remove that. Again, I, I come from a physics background, so I'm always trying to figure out what it is that it's doing. So if we say just a woman wearing, or wearing a dress made of leaves, okay? We should not get a headshot out of this because it, again, doesn't need to be close-up to prove that it's a woman. But when I say a woman, a beautiful woman or a woman with red hair, um, I'm asking more specifics and it's trying to prove to me, like, what are you asking for? Well, I'm asking for a woman. Well, okay. Uh, it's um, it's funny. If you think about what you're trying to do, if you, like I was doing the Alice in Wonderland thing, you say a, a, a blonde, a blonde woman um, who's standing on a beach. Okay. Well, does she need arms to stand on a beach? No, no, she doesn't. So she doesn't have arms. So a lot of the time you're arguing with yourself and trying to figure out what parts you need to focus on without being overly detailed and saying, okay, oh this is where this is what arm is and this arm's over here. And then pretty soon you've got this long paragraph and that's not helpful either. Uh, so uh, Peter, uh, who is an awesome artist. And again, I support this artist. So this is a person that I, I have huge respect for and really love his work. So I'm going to try and give, you know, give back to him. Um, all right. So we got some decent ones here that are fun like this is actually pretty good now i have found that and i don't know if this is a bug or just what's going on with this thing but if i ask for variations on this the faces are gonna go south like it's just never gonna be as good now it could be that that's changed again this thing is adapting so quickly to what we're doing with it um, the ratings of things is helping a lot from what i understand so let's just ask for variations on two because i think this is a nice interesting image to start with do we have anything up here? Mm, no, not really. She she lost her head here. Um, this is kind of like a, I don't even know what this is, like a portrait and a, you know, the back of her dress kind of thing. Um, this is a fail and this is okay. Um, I don't know that it's interesting enough. It doesn't have a lot of impact uh, versus this one here, which I like a lot better. Hey, maybe this is looking pretty promising because this I really like one of these up here. 
Hey, look at that. Looks like this is a lot better than it used to be. It used to be uh, pretty much a train wreck. I like this one. Um, I actually kind of like a few of these. But I think it did a nice job. They aren't all perfect. But why don't we just say do it again? And I love this reroll button. I use this a lot. I think this is one of those buttons that people don't use a lot. They just go for a version of something. But you say, hey, if you got four pretty good ones, why don't you give me four more pretty good ones and see if I just hit it out of the park and get exactly what it is that I'm looking for. Um, while we're doing this, let's go back. And let's do another imagine, the exact same prompt. But let's change the artist this time. You know, let's just pick something that's a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to pick a, let's do Thomas Hall. Actually, we could do Thomas. Uh, I was actually thinking Thomas Kincaid would be a good one too. Um, so he does a lot of, uh, you know, your, your very painterly looking kind of stuff. I feel like, let's do him. That's di different, different enough. I tend to like the same type of uh, artists, uh, or at least the looks of them. And let's change inspired to buy and see what happens. Okay, Thomas, don't hate me. All right, let's take a look at this one. This is another re-roll. And um, I think I like the images from the first attempt better. I think this one is interesting, although there's a bit of a jaw thing here, but we can fix that. Let's ask for variations on this specific image, which is, again, where it's probably going to take a terrible turn. Let's find out. So if you're wondering, I have a list of artists that I have, have kind of you know, conceived and collected and say, these are the people I really like art-wise. And I'm sure you have one as well. You just need to write them down. Um, your list is different than my list, obviously. So you, you'll, have to figure out, you'll have to figure out what it is that you like. Um, versus say what I like because we may not like the same thing. Like I also uh, use uh, WLOP as another person who I sponsor Patreon wise. Um, and I don't think this bot is trained in that. Well, let's try it though. Let's do an imagine trained by WLOP. Fantastic artist. Bye. Okay. How do we do here? Hmm. They're okay. This one's actually pretty decent. Are they better than the one I started with? Um, I'm kind of torn. I think I'm gonna go with uh, I think I'm gonna go with this one here. So let's ask for an upscale of number two. Let's see what that happens. Now our Thomas Kincaids are coming along nicely, and our WLOPs don't look like WLOPs. So I'm guessing that this bot doesn't know who he is. I guess it's a he. I have no idea. Fantastic artist. Fantastic artist. So my goal here is once I get something I kind of like, uh, we're going to take these into Photoshop and we're going to try and finish them. So we're not just going to leave it with the prompt. Right? I'm trying to start to think, don't stop with the prompt, right? Get the prompt, get the picture you want, and then don't quit. This is a great opportunity for you to add your artistic point to it. Don't say, hey, look at the art I made because you didn't make it. You typed it in and someone else made it for you. But if you can get something that is, is a really great point of departure and you have a couple that you like, smash them together. Um, photo bashing is a really great way to learn um, some different skills in Photoshop. Uh, and that, these are not the type of art I enjoy. So no, we're going to leave that behind. Look at, that. Look at that. What is going on there? These are bags of money. The lady has bags of money and she's being pursued by a crowd of people. Yes, this is the story that's going on right here. Obviously a bank robbery. Here is, uh, she is later. Uh, she's much happier um, because she got away. I'm guessing that. Uh, yeah, let's, no, we're not using those at all. So we'll just wait for these other ones. This is the one thing you've got to wait for this waiting to start business. Um, if you are using, um, if you're using relaxed mode, you just have to suffer through this. But again, look at how many images we're putting out and we don't really have to worry about it. Um, so if you have any questions or anything, throw them in the comments and I can, I can work through it. I, I kind of keep an eye on them here. Uh, as I said, we're working on kind of a fall scene. We have an AI challenge and uh, last week was Alice in Wonderland. Uh, this week is the four seasons and you don't need all four in one. As I said earlier, there's a kind of an AI challenge called the three basket challenge. This is can you produce a prompt that produces three completely different baskets of fruit in mid journey? And apparently that is not pas is not possible uh, yet. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Hey, here's another one of these little split things. Like I was thinking about a tree. Here's the picture of the tree you were thinking about. Uh, yes, that is that is the tree I was thinking about. Okay, this is um, the face is terrible here. This is okay. I, I'm not blown away by this. It obviously doesn't know who WLOP is. Uh, if you're not familiar with this artist, check check him out, her out. Wow, just really, really love it. Uh, still waiting on 
the upscale of that one, right? Okay, well, we're waiting on that. Let's do let's do something else uh, because we keep kind of go back in here. Um, uh, can I produce futuristic cities? I can, uh, but not today. Today we're going to try and get this uh, this out of the way. I want to try and produce something that I can get uh, accomplished for this um, for this this weekly challenge. Let's go with uh, Gaston here. I am absolutely horrific at spelling. You're going to find that's a really kind of fun thing to watch this stream for, as I can have creative all ways to spell. So I put a lot of stuff off and I copy and paste it in because that's the way I survive in real life. Now, this is a look, okay? This is a look. And a lot of people are doing this uh, Unreal Engine. This is a look, right? It's almost like this is an artist. So if you see, you're wondering, well, why doesn't he type Unreal Engine at the end of this thing? It's because I'm asking for a look by this specific painter. Unreal Engine is more or less another artist, as is Octane. Uh, if you're using Octane Render, if you're using uh, V-Ray, if you're using Bryce, these are all different rendering engines. So is 4K, so is 8K. Each one has a look. And when you're saying something like you want it by this artist, um, I would not go nuts and name like seven or eight artists because I think that you're uh, kind of muddying the waters. Although it is fun to combine them. Okay, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. But just be aware of why you're putting these in here. It's not that you're putting them in here um, because everyone does. But have a reason. You're looking for a look. So what would an image by Gaston looks like? Well, let's go find out. Let's throw this one out there and get it going. Um, and then we can we can at the same time go for other artists that we like. I'm again I'm just have a bunch that are my favorites. You do your own research. Um, let me do dress scenery. Whoops, put it inside the prompt. Maybe that'd be nice. And let's do this one. Again. Now, what we might do too is, after we, if we get going on this, we may actually go into mid-journey to borrow um, some, or I mean, to uh, Dali to borrow some fixes for some parts. If we have some issues with hands, for example, hands in here look like bags of sausages. That just doesn't work out real well. Uh, so we may go to Dali and say, "Give me better hands," and that's a really great use of Dali. I don't really enjoy the images come out of coming out of Dali. It's a, it's not what I am into AI art for, um, but again, it's useful. And then the same thing with Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion is pretty cool because I can give it an image and say, no, swap this for this. That is also very cool. But again, not really what I'm looking to do today. So let's go ahead and launch this one as well. We're still waiting. I see we're still waiting on this one here. Oh, like when I go and point it out and then it just happens to pop. Uh, so we'll let that one go. I just think this is really great to be able to put in here and say I'm looking for this as a look and get something so uh, another misnomer that i'm hearing people say is that this thing is just borrowing bits and pieces of art across the internet and that's how this whole engine works and that is not correct uh, so this whole system this whole diffusion system is based on non-equilibrium of thermodynamics so basically think of it like you're putting a drop of ink in water and that the ink is diffusing down into the water and if you were to come back say a couple minutes later and say, okay, where was the original ink drop? What did it look like? Can you guess by looking at that distribution uh, as that ink tries to equalize itself across that medium? Uh, that's kind of how this is working. It knows this is what this looks like, but it's it, what they do is they store the noisy versions of these things. And then of course it doesn't really know how it goes back together because it's not really the picture anymore. It doesn't store the picture. It stores the, the learned version of that noise. So it's taking the noise and trying to find a picture buried in it. Kind of like uh, kind of like looking at clouds and trying to find, oh, I'm looking for a race car. I know there's a race car up in this clouds. Can I find it? Uh, and that's when you can kind of find it. Um, someone says it can't upload images to Tencent. It, yeah, Tencent apparently is down uh, right now. They, or they've been down. Tencent, in case you don't know, is a facial reconstruction software that's free on the web. And it's fantastic but it's broken. And I think it's because everybody and their brother is freaking out with the faces and they haven't been able to get that solved. Now, Midjourney has done a substantial job in improving this engine recently. So I think that what we're getting out of it now is a lot, well, it was a, it is a lot better than it was two weeks ago. Um, when I first started this, this whole series, uh, the faces were bad, 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 bad. And now they're actually okay. Now they're, they're pretty decent. Okay, let's open this one here in the web a 
Interesting. Interesting. I don't know that I, I love any of them. But it's it's a look. That's that's that artist, right? Uh, for all of you who are who are wondering why I'm not doing the Unreal Unreal Engine thing, let's try it. And uh, let's just get rid of this completely and let's do engine. I, by the way, do like the Unreal Engine look. Uh, so if um, if you're wondering why I don't use it, I do use it. I like it. Um, I also like, as I say, Peter Morbacher is like um, just. I think amazing. So I tend to to go more for images like him. Uh, so let's do that. So leaves um, say, uh, let's just put a comma here, or we can do uh, by Peter Morbacher, and then comma Unreal Engine. The reason I'm putting the comma here is because I would I can also just do this. Um, I mean that's also fine. It's probably the same exact thing. But let's switch it and let's do a portrait now. Uh, remember this portrait here is not this is not a command. This is the equivalent of going A R. Uh, two colon three. Um, this I just have created these uh, these uh, options prefer option set. So if you type slash prefer option set, you can put these up. Um, I just like it this way uh, because that's what it is to me. It's a portrait, and uh, this this is except for this whole split thing here. That's pretty wild. I kind of like that. Um, it's different. Not loving it. This uh, this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. I can take this and we can we could maybe do something with this. So let's uh, we have to move to fast in order to upscale to the max. I wish this was automatic, but um, if that's all work I have to do to make this thing work, then <laughs> then be, so be it. I was trying to type in the word relax there and I obviously hit the wrong dumb button. There we go. So put it back in relax mode because I don't want to deal with with uh, paying for every one of these things as we're flying through these trying to come up with great ideas. Uh, what kind of technology does Midjourney use? It is not a GAN. It is a diffusion model. GAN's, uh, GAN's an adversarial network, and this doesn't use a GAN anymore. So it's kind of the next iteration. The next iteration after after the, after the diffusion model is coming up next, and that's going to be Party from Google and uh, Imaging from Google. So both of those tools are way different uh, than diffusion models. Um, so this is not a GAN. It's uh, much, although GANs are pretty cool, but uh, GANs can be used for a lot of stuff where diffusion models tend to kind of, uh, they're, they're better for for video and for imagery. And I mean, frankly, anything. It can be used for music, be used for 3D, uh, anything like that. Um, a GAN, if you don't know what a GAN is, was that the, um, uh, it's, it's basically a, a computer would generate an image and then there's a, a real image that it's compared against and the computer is deciding is this real image or is this fake it's a, if it can tell it's fake it basically sends it back but if it's like hmm, it could be real then it knows that it did a nice job and it trains itself on it's its own adversary so it, it, it argues with itself is it real or is it fake and it plays that game uh, so that's what a GAN is a uh, person says I notice I'm not using v3 v3 is the default uh, so unless you want an older version of the engine then don't type any v number uh, and minus S, uh, I'm not sure what minus S is for. Um, so I don't use minus S, so there's that. Okay, so now we're, this is more, this is more of a Peter Morbacher type of look to me because uh, it's a portrait. As I said, he's more of a portrait artist uh, than anything else. I like this one a lot. Uh, so I think I want to start there. Um, although this one is, I like the head. It's just kind of interesting to me. And I like the glowing eyes, right? I don't know what that is. Let's do both of these. So let's ask for versions of this one and of of three as well. Oh, stylized. Yeah, the stylized default is uh, is twenty five hundred, I believe, and I just leave it there. Um, st so stylized allows you to kind of take the the whole idea and run with it. Uh, Q uh, quality five is actually disabled right now, uh, so you can't do a quality five. The um, default is is one. Obviously, you can do a quality two. Uh, if you're paying for this bot uh, and you want to just kind of sketch something, then you can use Q.25, uh, for example. So do a quarter of the cost. Um, but I, I don't use much of the stylized, but I could. I could do, we can do uh, S in here and we could put a big number. Uh, it'll go up to 60,000. So let's do 30,000. Um, that should be a gigantic uh, shift. Basically, it means that it's going to barely take what I typed and it's kind of kind of run amok with it which is kind of nice. It's like a big dice roll. We have no idea what we're going to get. 
Um, but uh, the low number, I think is 625. That's the lowest you can set it to, which is uh, this is the reason why this engine isn't very good at say uploading an image and saying, take this image and modify it now because it's starting with a stylized of 625. So it's automatically gonna get stylized heavily up the front. Hmm. Okay, I like this one the most, uh, just because it's it's different. It's it's uh, it's got something going for it. I actually kind of really like this one quite a bit. Uh, these blowing leaves are okay, but I think I can do better. I have better imagery of blowing leaves that I maybe I'll Photoshop in. I really like this one. Actually, it's growing on me. So rather than upsize it right away, let's just go ahead and throw some versions of it just to be sure. Um, this one here, we already looked at these, I believe, and they're okay. No, no, these are versions of that other one. They're okay. You know what? Let's uh, let's roll this one again. This is that original prompt, I believe, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, this is that original prompt. Uh, let's re-roll it. I love this re-roll button. I said I use it quite a bit. Okay. Mm, which is uh, looking very interesting right off the bat. Here, that stylize command is doing some damage, as you can see. And maybe it's a good thing. That's a great suggestion, by the way. Uh, it's not fall anymore, though, which is the goal. Uh, but we're making some sort of art that maybe we can use for something else at some point. So I got to be careful that I stay within the, the theme. Hmm. I think this has got some promise. Again, I can replace the faces. So I got to, I get, so I, I'm a full-time photographer in case you don't know that. So that's why I have an infinite number of faces. So I can, I can take this and I can replace the face. Um, let's, uh, let's, I really like this one. And I think I like this one too. Oh, this one's also nice. Uh, I think I'm going to roll versions of all those. Oh, let's do, let's do the first one. Let's do the third one. And we'll come back and see if we get something amazing. Uh, cause if I'm getting something good, then I don't really need to, to go by. Um, do I find get better results saying inspired by or using by? Um, again, there's no way to tell because there's no way to compare. I did it this way and it did it this way because there's a different noise every single time. I could probably use the same seed, but again, that same seed isn't going to matter because it's a different quote. So it's very difficult to measure. Um, very difficult, if not impossible to measure. Uh, so it's a great, great question. But I find that if I use by or inspired by, it does tend to be stronger toward that, uh, that artist style. If I say by versus inspired by, um, I also find that the order is important. And so if I, if it's something more important, like I'm more worried about the leaves then the leaves should be up front. Um, so for example, let's, we could rewrite this prompt, um, falling leaves, autumn, is it, has it ended now? Yeah, autumn, um, woman standing. So when we say woman standing, now we know that it's going to try and show her legs because if we don't say standing, then it doesn't really feel the need to put her legs in there. So. Um, again, if we say beautiful woman, it's going to be more of a headshot. Uh, we st woman standing will probably be farther back. Now we can roll the dice with that and say woman and say a redheaded woman. Woman standing uh, next to next to a um, near like pool of water, and we have some blowing leaves. Repetition is important. So think of this, this spot is, is looking at each individual part of this and parsing it. And if it finds that you're mentioning the same thing, and not, not you're going to repeat it and you can put cat, 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 which by the way, does work in stable diffusion. But in here, I think it just confuses things. If you have more than one way to say the same thing, you're telling the bot, okay, evaluate this, now evaluate this. And you're going to get a similar answer, which means it'll be twice as strong, or at least that's the way I'm kind of looking at it. So blowing leaves, we have a... Um, we didn't say she has wearing a dress made of leaves. So say um, dress made of leaves. Let's do um, a portrait. Again, this is a shorthand. It's just a preference for AR uh, two, three. You can see it. Uh, I'm pointing to my screen. Like you can see me point to my screen. <laughs> it's right here, AR here. Uh, the quality is a good thing. So putting Q, Q uh, two is the most you can do now. Uh, five is disabled right now. I, four might work. I don't know, but I would just leave two. Um, I'm not going to turn stylize up very far. Um, I think that it was neat to get those other answers, but um, maybe it's too strong. I don't know. You kind of inspired me there a bit. I must admit, um, I really like that. Yeah, we could do we can do cinematic lighting. So we can see um, 
let's do let's do that. Let's talk about the so we have the context of what it is. So it's autumn leaves. It's a woman standing next to a pool of water. There's blowing leaves or dress. We're we're saying what artist we want this to be by, right? That was our our next thing was we're gonna say we want this by Peter, um, by Peter, Morbacher, right? Um, and then we could say what kind of lighting do we want? Do we care about the lighting? Um, we could say it's dramatic lighting, which is probably my favorite way to play it. Um, what that's going to do is probably put a couple of light sources in the scene and it's, I'm going to see them as like bright, shiny flares. That's typically what dramatic lighting means to this bot. It's not what it means in the photography universe. Um, it's more of a side lighting to, to us, but this will work. Um, you could also say Rembrandt lighting or loop lighting. I don't know if it knows those things. Uh, Dali uh, is actually pretty cool and you can actually specify what kind of lens you want to use. You could say, I want a Sigma 1.4 85 millimeter lens and it will do that. So this bot does not do that, but pretty cool that you can do that anyway. All right, so we've got we've got what it is. We have falling leaves, autumn, redheaded woman standing next to a mirror-like pool of water, blowing leaves, dress made of leaves by P. Mornbacher. Now, um, it's either dress made of leaves by Peter Morbacher. We have to be careful here because we don't need that the dress is made by Peter Morbacher with the whole thing, right? So I may just do this and then say Peter Morbacher. Now, to do that, I can make an important. So there's two things here that I want to compare. Um, I want, um, say, uh, let's just say by Peter Morbacher, okay? Something like this. But let's say, for example, the falling leaves are important to me. That's when you use the two colons. So everything starts out at equal weight. But I say falling leaves are more important than anything else in here. Woman standing next to a pool of water is also very important to me. So I'll say this is a two and this is a one. So the falling the pool, woman by the pool of water is more important than the falling leaves. That's where these summit, these two columns come in. It's as if you're taking two different images and you're smashing them together. Now, we we might get a good result without needing to do that here but don't use colons between every term because that's not really what they're supposed to be used for they're supposed to be used for multiple scenes uh, again this is for what i understand from listening to the developers talk about it people abuse this or do it incorrectly and it's not really helping because the bot's trying to take every item you're mentioning with equal weight and smashing them together um, that's what a, a it's like how would you then define something better so what kind of woman well it doesn't matter it's a woman and it's red hair and it's a dress well it's a woman in with red hair in a dress you can't put colons between that because it doesn't get how to do that uh, so dramatic so we have a lighting thing we have a styling thing and we have a thing where we want so let's just run with this and see what happens wow look what happened there somebody else is using my, my bot shutter bug guy that's not uh that's not what we want that's a different project Let's go up here and look at this. Okay, so, oh, so now this case, I have a dress made by Peter Morbacher. Look at that. Uh, it's here. Oh, wow, this is actually pretty decent. I really like that one. Let's ask for an upscale of that one. Maybe a version of it as well. Let's go here. No. Uh, now, this is the one with the heavy stylized on it. This is actually really interesting, isn't it? This is actually much more Peter Morbacher than the other images we've been looking at. Uh, this was really cool. I like this. Uh, it is not a very fall-like scene, though, but uh, let's just roll a version of against that one anyway. And this one I like as well. Let's roll versions on that one. And I, I even up upsize that one. This is why I pay $30 a month for this product, by the way. I can just bang on these buttons all day long and not care. Like, oh my god, I'm so like, oh, do I want to upsize that one? I, I don't know how many do I have left. I couldn't deal with that. I, I just want to upsize them because I love them. I really like this one too, um, or this one. There's quite a few of these I like. Let's roll an upsize of that one. Again, you can use your inbox up here if you're wondering what the hell's going on and you're getting lost in a very busy server. Um, you can use your inbox, but I'm just going to roll to the bottom here and see what it's kicking out for me. Hmm. I actually like quite a few of these. Again, just looking at the looking at the overall art. This is a sketch. You know, think of it like this is a low low quality sketch of what we're getting. Uh, I think this one is probably the more interesting one because the way her hand is here holding the leaf. Um, but there's a lot of work to fix that image, right? So we've got to walk into that. Um, I pay the extra 20 a month so that I get a private, meaning it's my stuff and no one else's. Um, wow, this is actually, I'm really glad you suggested the stylized here. This is actually really interesting. I really like that one. Let's upsize that one. Down here to these. Wow. 
Wow, I really love this one. Yeah, yeah, let's upsize that one. So we're getting to the end of what I'm looking for here. And then we'll start to pull it into Photoshop and see what we can do. Yeah, I've spent $30 in way dumber ways in my life than I have with this, that's for sure. Way dumber ways. So I'm, I'm kind of arguing with myself on what you guys want to see out of this uh, out of this channel. So I, obviously I'm a photographer, so I do a lot of photography stuff on here and a lot of Photoshop stuff. The mid-journey thing is great because it's kind of an endless supply of ideas and stock photography to use with my photography. So I smash things together. I do a lot of body painting and things like that too, which I obviously don't show here on YouTube very often. There's a couple of videos of that in my channel, but not too many. Um, so I'm kind of looking for ideas on what you guys like. You know, this has been, it's been great. Everyone has been really supporting the channel. Everyone who's joined recently, I, I can't thank you enough uh, for that. That's super helpful. Uh, but what do you want from the channel? Like, do you want me to continue to kind of push harder into the, uh, what we do with the images as we do them? Because this to me is, uh, this is fun and it's great. And it's a great way to spend time. And I'm learning a lot about how to push the engine uh, but it's what I do with it at the end that's also very important to me. Like, I want to be able to create art that I enjoy and not just say, well, I ran this bot and this is the piece I got and I'm going to mint it and try and sell it for something. Um, I want to say I made this and it's mine uh, and because I really did, you know. Um, so we're waiting on these here. Let's see, what else? Did we get anything else up here that I missed? Uh, we're waiting on that one. Let me look at these. It's not mine. So I think, uh, I kind of wish this would just default to opening it larger. Um, it's, an it's a very interesting dress. That's pretty cool. Um, now you've been making a lot of your own for, uh, photography backgrounds for photography. Curious what your prompts look like for that. Yeah, I have, I, well, I paint a lot of my own. Um, so if you're a member of this channel, uh, you get a, um, a bunch of member files each month. Um, so I'll show you the, this is the, per the YouTube professional, for example. So. Um, I have made all these textures over the years that um, I give away every month. So you guys have the opportunity to use these any way you want to. Uh, so I have a lot of people who, who use these. Um, and, and a lot of them are hand painted. And they're just made by me in Corel Painter. and uh, Or they're 3D things that kind of goof with. But these are all in there. But what I've been doing recently is giving away the Photoshop files. So people come in and say, hey, I really want to see like how I did this mid-journey mashup here. Or the one we just did a couple days ago. It's actually in here for you. All the light, all the layers and everything are in there. I did I did downsize it a bit, um, so it's only uh, 220 pixels on the long edge instead of 10,000, which is what my camera shoots, because uh, nobody got time for that, right? But it's neat to see how I do skin, and a lot of people have questions on how I handle that. So all that's in here for you, uh, along with some other stuff for Capture One and, and other goofiness. But uh, that's what I've been trying to focus on. So, uh, but I need to know what it is that you want. You know, what makes you happy. Wow, we are waiting for this bot. The thing I cannot do now is if I put this into uh, fast mode, it won't it won't handle these because they were already issued. They're already in the queue. Um, Jean says she doesn't personally know anything about photography. We're here for some tips, skills, and simple tips like uh, arc tense and, and and life. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what you're gonna learn here as as I'm doing them now. Like, uh, but if that's what everybody likes and everybody's happy with, I'll continue to do it. Th to me, this is this is. Uh, this is a really fun time, uh, but I'm going to be gone next week. I'm speaking in Austin at their uh, state convention. Then I'll be at Houston to do a body paint. I'll be home briefly. And I'm heading to Chattanooga to do a body paint and do a boudoir workshop there. So I speak a lot in, in different states, uh, state conventions for photography. Uh, so I travel quite a bit and there's going to be a bit of that coming up here soon. So, all right, here we go. Uh, so this one is upscaled, is not upscaled to max. Uh, so we can look at this and say if we're happy with it, and I am pretty happy with that. So let's let's take this up to the max. So in order to do that, we have to put it in fast mode, as it doesn't do this automatically. Upscale to max, and at the same time, I'm going to do a light upscale redo. Uh, that's the same image, but not as crunchy. Uh, I find that um, oftentimes I'll use both. Like I maybe don't want the whole image to be as crunchy feeling. So. Uh, and this guy here is just working on his zombie girlfriend at the same time we're doing this live stream. So he's famous now. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit famous. Uh, so let's, uh, we'll wait for this. While we're waiting for that, let's just go ahead and open it up and we can start the process of getting this into, um, into somewhere we can use it. Let's throw it into, so I have a whole mid-journey bucket that I put 
images I like here. This is what a GoPro image of a cat in a spacesuit looks like. By the way, GoPro footage of is a really fun, really fun one uh, to play with. So I don't want to save it over my cat. Let's go. Leave one. Uh, the fusion model. So the the diffusion model, I don't want to bore everybody with, it's a lot of math, but basically you take an image and you add noise and then you add more noise and you add more noise and you keep doing this and, and you don't look at previous steps. Every time you add noise, it's like you started from that point. Uh, and each, each one of those steps is completely independent of the previous step. So when you get done with that, at the end, you have a picture that is only noise. It is nothing original of the original image. And basically that is how this is is looking at things so you can say this whole time you're like, but this noisy picture you have here this is a dog now, there's a whole thing there's a whole unit thing and some learning uh that i'm not going to go into because that'll bore the crap out of you but uh, you're basically taking things like that and then working your way backwards and say okay there's a dog in this you know there's a dog in this find the dog for me and it knows what other images of dogs look like uh, based on, again, all this noisy diffusion process. It just tries to do the math backwards. And it's not so much trying to find an image, by the way, as it's trying to predict what the noise that was added was. So it's it's really, uh, I think it's terribly interesting. Um, but again, it's beyond the scope of what I think most people want to listen to on this uh, thing. But you never know. Oh, that's uh, really terrible. Absolutely terrible. Actually, this one looks, looks like somebody, uh, looks like a rock star. I'm trying to think of who that looks like. A male rock star, though, not a female. All right, let's go back to... While we're waiting for this, we'll just go back to Photoshop here. Um, we're probably going to end up changing you know, our base image, but we can still work at this a bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some stock photography of different things. So I have a whole bunch of assets that I've collected over the years. So I have... I'm, oops, up here. I want, I want Photoshop. Yeah, I keep myself super organized because you're going to get lost um, if you just have so much stuff so um I, I keep very good track of what it is i have leaves and petals and i'm looking for autumn let's go autumn oops i don't want bubbles i want leaves um, leaves only. and uh, you could generate these yourself uh but again uh, because this is what i do for a living i'm trying to get pictures as quickly as possible out to clients um so Oftentimes, that would be my goal is to try and get something done quickly. God, I really love this one. Oh, it looks kind of weird now that it's upsized. Look at that creepy hand. That's What is that? Is that a hand? It could be a hand. Okay, I like this one. Let that go. Our zombie girl. It's not our girl. Uh, yeah, this is... Uh, it's it's kind of taken on almost a paper craft type of look. I almost prefer the, the light upscale. So let's do a light upscale of that one. This one, uh, we'll grab this one in a minute and we'll bring it in. So let's go back to Bridge. Bridge, by the way, is a fantastic tool for viewing all of the stuff that you've got. So if you've got a Midjourney folder, like I do, and you just go and you've got all your all your stuff. Oh, these are all my Alice in Wonderland things I was working with. I got some backgrounds I've been working on. Yeah, so it, this is like the my my uh, the technical term is actually called a morgue. Um, your idea bank of things um, is a morgue. So I'm looking for uh, just some falling leaves i don't want anything insane i just want a couple uh, and i'm not sure i want to do this like i'm, I'm just going to play with it and see what happens uh, but i'm all about artistic happy accidents right so let's just use this uh, drag it in here. so if you drag things always drag it into the work surface not into the layer palette because if you drag it over there um, it's going to uh, attempt to open it as a new document so I'm doing is I'm just gonna we just want to add to this like it isn't autumn enough for us and we're not gonna we're not gonna deal with it too much. Let's go back to okay. Here's our upscaled max. So let's go open this. Uh, save images. We'll put that in here. Put it right over the top of this one. Yes. Okay. And then we'll go back to Photoshop and we're gonna start over again. We're gonna go open. grab those leaves again actually there's, there wasn't enough leaves in that one it's just a, it was, it's a, a tiny amount of leaves i want more leaves let's do something like this okay i'm just looking for something that's uh interesting 
And I, I, again, I don't have to leave it like this. Like, if I hate it, it's okay. It's just, let's start somewhere. Let's not just stare at the screen and go, well, I don't know what to do, so I'm not going to do anything, right? Um, let's at least get something done. And if we hate it, we can go back and change it later. That face actually upscaled really well. I'm surprised at how well that upscaled, actually. Uh, really well. Uh, in fact, let's, uh, let's goof with this a bit. Let me show you this trick. So let's take this. And uh, let's make a new document out of this one. Out of this. If we take this image here and we save this off, I just have a, I just have this weird idea. I'm gonna save this off as a, God, I hate this new save as thing, save as a copy thing. Let's save it as a PNG. And let's take it to Dali um, and let Dali play with the face and see what happens there. How about we do that? That might be fun. So I'm gonna do find Dali here. I took all my bookmarks off, so that's smart of me, so I gotta go dig for it. Two seconds here. Dali two. Almost there. And I gotta go in and, and we gotta go back to Discord anyway and see what, what else we created here while we were gone. Oh yeah, this one, which I also really like. This one doesn't have the same paper crafty kind of look to it. Um, I want to upscale this one to the max as well. I think. And I want to up, up, light upscale as well. Should have hit relax before I did that one. Though, but okay. Okay, here's Dolly 2. So what I want to do is I want to upload an image and I want to go find, here's my backgrounds for here. Let's go find this thing, and we want, we want this part here. Probably could have uploaded that the original image, actually. Let's do that. What am I doing? I was trying to be smart and upload a square image, and I guess I don't need to, because Dolly's going to say, oh, you know what? Dolly's going to freak out because I got a face in it. Maybe. Let's try this. Let's say done. We're going to edit, and we're going to say, give me a different face. Um, lovely woman. I don't think it's going to like me for this. They, they've got so many restrictions on this stuff right now. Um, we'll see. And if this doesn't work, we could throw it in stable diffusion as well. But um, our face is actually pretty decent. And Tencent, as uh, somebody said, was down right now. So we can't really get to that. Um, very much enjoying the videos. Um, I'm, not, I'm sure you're aware, but I enjoy adding Chaos 100 to everything. Oh, okay. Hey, look at that. Uh, that's not exactly what I was looking for. Yuck, 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 yuck. I like my original one better. Anyway, it gives you an idea of a way to kind of get around a problem with the face of 10 cents down, but um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. So, yeah, that's even worse, isn't it? Yeah, oh, I love this one though. Just love this one. Let's save this off as well. Anyway, that's some of my strategy behind how I do this kind of stuff. All right, let's get rid of this thing. Come back. All right, so we got this big thing here. Um, I'm just looking at it from standpoints of what stuff bothers me when I'm looking at this, this screen. And I have other leaf overlays here as well. There's some branch overlays. Oh, I don't want those. I want autumn leaves. Let's go here, autumn leaves. Yeah, I have a link down below, I think, to where I bought all these overlays. I've been buying these things for years. I mean, they're, they're just handy for getting out client work quickly. Um, if you're only looking for leaves, you don't have to go out and say, oh, I need to go out and shoot leaves today, honey, because I gotta go gotta get this picture done for a client. Just, just buy them. It's, uh, it's why they're for sale, right? Save you some time. And, and when we're doing this, you're like, why? Obviously, I don't want it across her face, but the, the concept here is that we have a middle ground, a background, and a foreground. We have to represent all three of them. Um, if we just represent the middle ground, which is just her, that's fine. But I think that it's more interesting if we can represent all of them. So I'm going to take these, all these here, and I'm going to flatten those because I'm gonna, we're going to put a, a, a mask on it. So let's start here. 
And I'm going to just do select and do select subject, and that should find her just fine. Yep, and that's good enough for me. And we're just going to save. Um, I'm just going to save it. I always call it one because I'm lazy. Go back to this. And then we're just going to apply that to this by holding on the Alt key, and that will turn off all that. Now, I don't want it all off, but I want to start somewhere. So I'll start, and I want to bring some of these back. Because, again, these, these blurry foreground elements are kind of interesting, right? They, they give more of an impression that there's something going on here. Plus, plus, I'm thinking, like this one here, um, I can go and grab it. Let me grab both of these and move them over her weird ass hand over here. Right? <laughs> so I should be able to cut those out and move them over her hand. And now we don't have to deal with the hand so much. Maybe, maybe is that kind of cheap? Hold down and uh, hold down control, by the way, is, is how you select something like that. So I could go and find a better hand, but maybe this is just, you know, we're being quick here. After all, it's just a free competition, right? I don't want to spend eight years doing it, but at the same point, I do want to put a nice effort toward it. I'll get rid of some of these leaves. It's a bit too many for me here, especially on this side. Um, again, I'm just painting on the mask. Um, so there's just a mask on this layer. So the, the leaves are still here. So if I change to white, which is X, um, you can toggle back and forth between black and white uh, to bring or get rid of them or bring them in, whatever you're looking to do. Uh, looks like that one is part of the original image. Look at that. Um, this is kind of a big blurry mass here. Again, we don't know what we're going to keep, but it's it's nice to just start with something and then kind of work your way back. Uh, I don't like this hand. Uh, so let's uh, let's let's go back to Dali, right? We still have it open. Let's go back to Dali and upload again. Pick her and say fix this damn hand. Basically, so I'm going to give give it the whole image in here. Edit the image. Or find your hand and say lonely hand uh, holding a leaf because if we again we give it a directive it's not gonna be just like a hand it could be a hand doing who knows what but if we i do like that dolly like it'll it'll it should look at the style of the art around it and try and fit it in at least i hope it does because we don't want like a super hyper realistic hand Hmm. Uh, so holding a hand, um, warm colors, uh, holding it. What kind of leaf? Well, we didn't tell her. It's an autumn, um, I mean, red, red autumn leaf, right? Warm colors. And that's how you make a hand. In case you were wondering, that trick right there was worth the price of admission. <laughs> So combining these together has been pretty handy. Oh, I've been, I don't like, I talk about this other time because I'm really happy with it. I've been making a, a custom Catan board with my laser cutter and I finally got my first piece done. So I'm really happy with it. When I get that done, I'll probably make a whole course on it. Wow, that is a damn red leaf, isn't it? Let's not go with red leaf. Let's go with uh, um, unmuted orange. <laughs> that 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 hurts that's actually usable um we could go back and we could grab that one uh if we needed to but i'm hoping for i'm hoping for better here hoping for better thanks for coming out and hanging with me today by the way i like you guys are very interactive i enjoy that um i think this one is a good one so let's take this one download it and we're just gonna drag it right into that document here. And uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna enter it, and then I'm gonna hit five uh, to make it. Um, you know, if I didn't have a brush active anyway, it would do that. But I have a brush active, so it's not going to. Hit five, it will make it opaque, and then I can go and I can line stuff up if I need to. Um, doesn't have to be perfect because again, we we altered this anyway. But um, I do want it close. And then we don't need the rest of the image. We only need the arm or the hand. So I'm just going to, I'm going to use a mask and turn it all off. And then go in here and say, just this part. And just this, this part. There we go. And I can make sure that it looks good. Are you happy with that? Uh, 
it's still 50% opaque, so we gotta make it 100% opaque. And that's okay, it's not warm enough, so let's go warm it up. Attach a hue and saturation, and we want to focus just on the hand there, so. Also too light, it's like a very bright hand. I like the tones of the rest of the image, so I'm just trying to match that a bit, so like this. And then we can go back and we can perfect this mask a bit, so we don't need any of this up here. Gotta find our happy medium. Where does the leaf start in that dress? I think like that. Looks pretty good. We can, and this is non-destructive, so we can continue to play with it here too. To get bright color. Something like that. I like that. That's better than whatever hamburger she had before there for hand. There. Oops. I don't want to flatten all these leaves yet. So we got our leaves. We got our hand. So the hand is good. Uh, so let's put the hand down here and combine that here. Now these are all, <clears throat> excuse me, these are all the leaves we've added. I don't like this one. Now I think we can do a little bit better on the background. So let's grab a background. So I'm just gonna go and grab probably one I painted um, because I have them. Let's go use one that you get if you join the channel. <laughs> I could use this one. I made this one. Throw this back here. <clears throat> this. And this may not work. We're going to find out if we like it or not. So um, I want it to be in the background. So in order to do that, I have to release this background layer by hitting... Actually, I don't have to put it behind her. I can put it in front of her. But I can use the mask. So go Control, click on it to load it. That's a lot easier than going to Select load selection click 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 that's too much work just go channel control click on the mask or channel on the thumbnail and it'll load it for you and dolly uses gans no dolly uses diffusion model as well actually and then i want to change the blending mode of this to something like overlay or soft light or something like that I always look at all of them because you never know. Again, it's that happy accident that gives you an idea and you're like, oh, I never would have thought of that. But it's almost always overlay or soft light. In truth, it's almost always one of those. So let's go with uh, soft light and I'm going to, I'm gonna put a hue saturation on that because I think we need to guide this a bit. What I do is I wiggle the, all the controls pretty wildly and then find what I want. It's not like it's, I'm just gonna move it a little bit. Don't move it a little bit because you don't know if you moved it a little bit further if it would have been better. So just move it a lot and see what you like. Don't stop, just kind of give it a wiggle. You know, give it a wild, the wild, I do this with every control. Wild wiggle to see what you like. And these leaves are too in focus, or a lot of these leaves are a little bit too crispy. And now they also don't match the art of the rest of this image. So uh, let's apply this layer mask so we can just deal with this. So let's duplicate this, and turn it off, and we can use some of the, like if you're not an artsy person, you could use one of these um, art stylized things. Don't they have some oil paint? Let's use that. I never use this, by the way. So <laughs> we're just gonna play with it and see what happens. Uh, stylize it. What's this do? Is it doing something? getting a brush detail lighting. Let's just hit okay on that. Uh, no, that looks terrible. So let's not use that. That's why we're experimenting. But this is too crisp. These leaves don't match the rest of this. So we gotta blur this. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just throw a number in here like four or six or something like this. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now, uh, does, can we benefit from any more? I don't know, this might be good enough. Let's hit save, because we haven't saved it yet today. That'd be a bad thing to lose this. Let's just save it. And then choose our Lee, that's fine. And then uh, I want to grab and maybe bring another texture in. So let's grab something else in here. Again, these are all the ones I've painted over time. They're named after 
after uh, characters and books I've read. I'm reading Dungeon Crawler Carl right now, if you guys are into that. That's a fantastic book. Okay, let's use this one. We'll use this one a lot. Like this, throw that. Oops, just missed. There we go. And then I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna mute her out. Let's just see what happens if we throw this over the top of it. Pretty interesting, is it? Is it? Do we do any good or do we do bad? Um, I think I liked it before. Um, you can also lower the opacity if it's too much of an effect. Like half speed, is it better? Did we? Did we? Do we do ourselves a favor? Um, I don't know that we did. So let's get rid of it. Hmm. You know, I actually, I actually do think I like it at about half like there I think that's I think that's pretty decent um, is there anything else we can do here uh, we can bring this one back in again and uh, try it right over the top of the whole image and again again I'm looking for inspiration I'm not looking to decide this is the way it's going to stay but you never know yes that is a mid-journey image in case you're wondering no I didn't paint that I wish I could say I painted it, but I did not. So uh, I think this is interesting, but I don't think it's going to work with this gap here. So let's take and see if it can find the subject here, um, what it's going to do for that. I don't know. We'll just let it randomly decide what's interesting. Okay. Um, that's probably not going to be great, is it? Just brainstorming here. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's move this. Let's take this image here. And let's move it down here. And let's get rid of all the top. We always use a mask, by the way. You never, we never use, um, we never use uh, erase. Right? We don't do erase. Something like this. And then we can tell it we're gonna merge it, um, merge it if it's brighter or darker than the current image. So you can pull this kind of down. And if you hold down your Alt key, you can pull just part of it. So something like this. And then change the blending mode. And see so if we can get something a little bit more reasonable. Again, I'm just experimenting. I don't really know if I'm going to like it or not, but um, I'm just looking to make it more interesting than it was. And let's turn this off. This thing needs to be on top if we're going to use it at all. I haven't decided if we like that yet or not. Worth a try. I don't like it. So one last thing let's do um, before we're done with it. I think her face is good enough here. Um, maybe. I'm going to have to find a different nose because, no, I'm deciding that nose is terra bad. Um, so we'll have to re... I'll redo the face, but I'm not going to be able to look through my photography online here. Um, there's too much nudity that i got to dodge. But let's just pretend her face is good because I'm going to come back to it in a little bit. Let's do. Let's do one final thing. Let's color grade the image. Color grading is so important to everything. Like, don't skip this step. This is like this. This is the step that separates the good photographer from the from the great photographer. Um, is color grading. So let's use a curve to color grade first. I'll show you this. I've, a lot of people just hit auto on this. And why would you hit auto? Well, auto can do a lot of work, uh, but it doesn't do a lot of work by default. Hold on Alt and click on auto and change it to. Uh, one of these others. So one of these other ones are more interesting because they will help balance the image. Like enhanced per channel contrast is usually pretty decent. Um, you can get a more interesting result out of it this way. So uh, this that's one way that I would come in and, and attempt to start color grading. Uh, so that's a good one. And then a another method. So after I do this, like I may or may not keep this. Like I haven't decided. But this is a really good one if you're just trying to do you know, to, to make something look sane because we're doing it against all the other items underneath it. Like we don't do it against each one. We do it at the top because when you combine all these things together, then they, they look more harmonious. They look like they all belong together. Like these leaves that I've added should look like they came from the original piece, right? Uh, the other thing you can do is again, any other things that add to this above and beyond, then I would look at the color lookup. 
Um, so color lookup are a bunch of LUTs or lookup tables is what that stands for. And you can bring these in and again, apply them to the whole image. And I am just going to look through them and see if I'm inspired by any of them. I don't know if I'm going to keep them or not. Like I like this drop blues. That's, that, that's one I really, I've almost always liked that one. It's almost decent. Oh, we have one called fall colors. Foggy night. I also love this one. Usually not for this image, but usually yes. So let's look through these. These are just for inspiration. I like this one. What I like about it is it has lifted the black off the bottom. It, there's no true black anymore. Oh, that one's actually pretty decent too. And that's, again, it's another one I always love. I always love futuristic bleak. Then you want to find the one that works with the image. Like I think this without this curve here. Um, just looking through these real quick. Be inspired. And we can, again, because we've done this against the whole stack, it's going to look more realistic. Um, I like this candlelight one too quite often. All right, so I think I liked, was it fall colors um, or drop blues? I like drop blues. I think that's good. I'm about the subtlety of things. These violent maneuvers to fix images oftentimes don't look very good to me. So let's, let's add a curve to this. Uh, so usually I want to lift. I like that lifted to black so you can pull the black right off the bottom there. You can also use your cursor keys and if you, your arrow keys. Um, and then I want to, I want this middle. Uh, I can't really see it very well here. This middle part of the curve here has to cross the middle of this here usually. So that means I have to brighten this side here. Right? Uh, so it's a subtle S. This is just a best practice. It doesn't mean that it has to always be this way, but if you don't know, then don't break the rules. Let's just say uh, Andy Warhol said, if you if you make if you make something uh, if you, if you make art and you don't know the rules, uh, you you make crap, right? But if you if you make art and you've broken the rules, you know then you've you've made art. Uh, so so don't break the rules until you know them, right? I think that looks pretty good. Uh, and then I can go and I can continue to play with these things. I think I want. Um, I'm not really happy with that one. I also tend to walk away from these for a while and come back um, because your face gets used to looking at the same thing over a while. Like this is pretty good. And again, it's a little strong. So if I just back it off a bit, um, I like the muted palette there. I think that's more professional looking to me. I'm very happy with that. Anyway, so I'll go find a face somewhere and put that back on. So then when it's done, then I'll put it back up. Um, again, I'll put this Photoshop file into the member documents if uh, you're one of the Photoshop professionals for the group. I greatly appreciate you uh, hanging around with me today. Uh, let's go back over here to, to this goofy camera. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Uh, I'm going to try and do these a couple times a week. Uh, Monday's my mid-journey day for sure. And I'm trying to do that on Fridays as well. Uh, and then Tuesdays is Capture One and Photoshop, if you're into that. And then I'm going to try and fit in a laser day, too, because I've been playing with my laser cutter a lot, and I think that there's not a lot of great videos for the artistic side of the laser cutter. So I know that has nothing to do with the rest of this channel, but it's something I like to do, and that's why I want to throw it out there. So if you guys have questions or anything, throw them in the comments below, and I'm happy, I'm happy to get back with you on it. Uh, if you have things you want to see me do on here that I haven't been covering or I'm moving too fast, I know this is not a beginner-level Photoshop channel, right? That's not my goal. My goal is to kind of take you from the beginning to the end. It's not a, hey, here's how you solve this specific problem. There's plenty of other channels for that. Uh, this is more of a end to end. And again, it's just my techniques. It's not necessarily the it, the only way to do it. It's just how I prefer to do it. Um, and uh, I'm happy with the way they turn out. But thanks for hanging out with me today again. Thanks to everybody who supports this channel. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate you. And I'm going to have a whole separate video of that coming up here soon too, because there's so many new people who've joined. Um, I want to give a huge thanks to everybody out there. So everybody, thank you so much for hanging out.